Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and it's time for another reveal of Champion of Chaos. This time we're looking towards Festus the Leech Lord who finds himself in, well, a very difficult position. Festus and his forces of Nurgle find themselves in the Brass Keep, which is right in the heart of the Empire, meaning that there's not many possible allies around the area, possibly just some beastmen and that's it really. So Nurgle must grant him some boons and prove why his forces are one of the toughest around. With very little Norskin forces around the area and very little amount of dark fortresses, it's definitely an interesting campaign which is going to make you well, see a lot more warfare than you can expect. The great thing, however, is that you do start with a Dark Fortress already under your control, which is unlike all the other Chaos Lords. But let's jump into some other matters too. So as you can see, we've got the faction effects for Festus known as the Leech Lord's Cavalcade, which really gave me vibes of the whole Carnival of Chaos thing, and that has the following benefits. Vassals gain poison attacks and spread Nurgle corruption as expected, can brew plagues, and finally souls plus 25 when a plague is spread, which is going to be quite helpful if you know how to spread your plagues. The vassal thing will become more useful if you decide to move your forces into Norska, which you might want to do after you start solidifying yourself around the territories of the Empire. As expected, it's always good to have some friends when causing some chaos. When it comes to his own personal trait, we have Dark Apothecary, which has the following benefits. Plague duration plus three turns for armies in province. Very, very useful, as you kind of want plagues as much as possible. And Battle Healing Cap plus 25% for Lord's Army. You do have a few ways to heal up your troops, and seeing as your or troops are kind of slow, having some extra HP is always very helpful. And you're going to want to be able to cast off as many heals as possible, trust me, when you have to deal with a lot of gunpowder. Hey, it's a little tough. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on. So in regards to his own personal skills, he is a hybrid character, good at melee, good at spellcasting, a little bit of everything. He's not very fast though, so keep that in mind. You do have your own personal unique skills, as you can see here, such as increasing regeneration, battle healing cap, even getting a ability to be able to regenerate. Uh, more hit points for the character, extra unit mass, Nurgle authority is all expected. This is all to make your stuff more durable, make him more durable too, which is very, very needed. You kind of move as a walking tank. Nurgle's not about causing damage, but it's rather about taking damage and being able to knock out the enemy as you progress. And I feel like this is very well represented here. You also can get some increased diplomatic relations with the other Chaos Factions, the Beastmen, and all that type of stuff, which does make sense because Nurgle is the friendliest god. You might remember certain minor factions of Nurgle Demons, which were just overly friendly. So we're not going to take a lot of time talking about recruitment here because we've already done so in previous videos, but what we do have here is the Nurgle roster. It might seem a little small, but we're expecting loads of Nurgle units in the future with like a Tamakon DLC or something because, I mean, it only makes sense. And yeah, it's the same way that we've seen for the other Champions of Chaos and how they upgrade units, how they mark them. You've got the Marauders, the Chaos Warriors, the Chosen, the Forsaken, this Chaos Spawn. You even get some Knights, Marauder, Horsemen and Chariots, so you do get some speed. You know, like Nurgle is not supposed to be really, really fast, so having a little bit does help. And obviously you do have access to the Undivided units, so your roster is still fairly large. It's just not so green. But don't worry if you feel like you don't have enough units because as with all the Champions of Chaos, you do have access to gifted units, and this is Demons of Nurgle, because you are a Nurgle faction, some Ogre Shagoths, and also the Hell Cannons, this is the way that you get them. You have a decent amount of stuff. They're still slow, because, well, you know, Nurgle Demons, but uh, you're still able to pack a big punch once you actually get to your enemies, so there's nothing really there to worry about, I would say. It's not just units that you'll get, but also god touch lords and heroes. For example, the Exalted Hero of Nurgle, which this is your basic hero type, this is the only one that you have that's god touched. This is a melee character, able to do a decent amount of damage, you can have them on a Chaos Chariot, you can have them on some steeds, and generally 
Pretty good, pretty good. You will want more spellcasters, and it's a shame that you can't god touch them just yet, but I guess they're leaving some stuff out for future content, which does make sense. But this also affects a Lord Choice, but that's a spellcaster instead. Now here's the really exciting part, or at least I think so. So the Champions of Chaos have their own technology tree, which is very different to that of the ones for the Chaos Undivided characters. Not only that, but since each of them are their own sub-factions with their own monogod style, Festus will have one dedicated to Nurgle, so you've got the same one as you've seen in the Azazel video and the layout is exactly the same but instead of getting stuff focused on Korn, Zinch or Sunesh, now it's focused on Nurgle and I think this is pretty cool because this means that each of the Champions of Chaos feel very very different and it's not just because of the units, it's because of the tech, it's because of everything, how the layout is done, it's... Weird. I never really expected something like this. You can see all the benefits here. That means that you'll be getting some of the benefits that you're used to with the Nurgle demon faction with Korgath. And yeah, it's it's awesome. Middle section is all focused around Chaos Undivided. And keep in mind that that's still something that you will need to do. I can't stress this enough. So I'm going to stress it out with every single Champion of Chaos. If you want to get chosen, if you want to get certain bonuses, you need to also focus on the middle. It's uh, something that I learned the hard way. So a healthy mix of both is usually the best way to go. Try and plan ahead if you can, as really going between both different trees or branches is very, very beneficial to your expansion as a Chaos Faction. And Festus, I believe, needs this the most, considering that he starts in one of the harder positions. As a Warriors of Chaos Faction, you've also got access to the Gifts of Chaos. And here's the Undivided section, which gives you general bonuses to Undivided Units, stuff around some missile resistance, defensive supplies. This also works with you economically too. This costs souls, which is part of your new currency as I've explained in previous videos. So keep in mind that it will cost upkeep and to unlock the better versions like getting hell cannons per turn and so on, you will need to get a healthy abundance of them. So early on, you might not be spending it so much at the very least. As a Nurgle dedicated faction, you only have access to the gifts of Nurgle, not the other gods. And this is how you'll be able to recruit your demons, get some Decent bonuses all around, to be honest. And once again, it works the very same way. So you're just going to have to slowly build your way up. The great thing is that the Nurgle one gives you access to, say, for example, Plague Bearers and Nurgling. So you get a bit of a double bonus and for the exact same cost too. It's very cost efficient and it will mean that you'll be able to field more demons more quickly and have a lot more support should you so need it. And again, I can't stress this enough. You're in the middle of the Empire. A lot of people hate you. You have higher version very early on. You're going to need it. Plus, it does make for an interesting demon tide. Construction is what is expected from the Warriors of Chaos rework, and the only reason I'm stating it here is because you do have a bit of a benefit with the Brass Keep as you start with Tier 2. It might not sound like a lot, but that means that you have an extra build slot, and that means that you can build up some extra defenses, which can be very, very useful. As this is just a showcase, I'm just going to be building up some basic construction, nothing with the actual defenses, but trust me, it does actually help. Most of the factions have a lot of aversion towards you and will declare war, especially on higher difficulties, very, very early on. Your commandments are also fairly unique as they will be more focused around Nurgle, so you can spread Nurgle corruption, better growth, better chance of spreading plagues. It depends on what you actually want, but the Nurgle theming for a Nurgle faction is very important. It's irrespective of the fact that it is a Warriors of Chaos faction. It's uh, a very interesting system, I must say. The more I think of this, the more I'm hoping that we do get more DLC like this in the future if it's received well. And of course, since you are a Nurgle faction, well, you get access to plagues, which makes a lot of sense. And Festus has his own base plagues as, well, it doesn't make sense to have the same ones as Kogath. And really, the mechanic is exactly the exact same way. It's something that you should be used to if you've played as Korgath before. And plague spreading is very useful. If you recall, I mentioned that you do get more souls from it. So it does help you out to be able to get souls, to be able to ascend your characters to demonhood, to be able to summon more demons. It's all that type of stuff that links up together to be a rather thematic campaign. When capturing settlements, keep in mind that the minor ones are still not really worth it, as I've said in previous videos before. You also get chances to get infections. This is, you know, the usual stuff for the plagues and stuff. A little gripe I do have with Nurgle, it would be nice if there was also a little bit of extra casualty replenishment when sacking or raising or even occupying because, well, it kind of fits, you know, your 
being a Nurgle faction, you're spreading the corruption, a little bit of extra regeneration would be very, very helpful when you're in the middle of the Empire. And I'll explain a little bit of authority too, as you can see here. Authority is linked up to getting some bonuses, but if you have no authority or you have negative authority, you'll get some negatives. But this stuff can fall behind getting extra upkeep reduction, casualty replenishment, which is obviously very, very useful extra recruitment cost reductions and even warband upgrades which again helps out a lot as the warriors of chaos don't have the best economy this is something that i've noticed and i've said with the the undivided factions but yeah money is not going to be good for you especially as festus which you're stuck in the middle of the empire with really only three dark fortresses in your immediate vicinity jumping in with a quick edit here because i forgot to have it before this is the only item that festus gets his hands on and it's pretty good obviously you get casualty replenishment extra authority and some extra physical resistance it makes him a lot tankier you do want this it's uh not a difficult quest battle in all honesty i'm just not putting it here because spoilers and i don't like to have the story elements in these types of videos in case people want to avoid the spoilers in general when it comes to recruiting new armies if you want them in a nurgle theme you're gonna have to go for a chaos sorcerer lord and also it has to be the lore of death as these are the ones that can dedicate to nurgle don't you worry that it's not a basic chaos lord they're still relatively tanky as well you know they still wear chaos armor and they're still able to do a lot of damage and yeah it starts off pretty much there you can get a Chaos Steed, you can get a Chaos War Shrine, a Manticore, even a Chaos Dragon. Everything is as expected, it's basic skills, nothing really changes too much in these locations. But then when you go with Path to Glory, you can either ascend them to a Undivided Demonhood, which is the uh, rank 30, very expensive though. Or if you want to dedicate them to Nurgle properly, which then gives them a new skin and some little abilities, all that type of stuff. You can choose to go with the Devote to Nurgle with either Lore of Nurgle or Lore of Death. After which, at rank 20 for those, you can turn them into Demon Princes of Nurgle. And you'll see them later on in this video. It's a process that might take some getting used to at the beginning, if you don't know all the different laws of magic associated to the certain gods and all that. But I assure you, after a few turns, you'll start to get used to it and you'll know exactly what to recruit without too much of an issue. As it goes, the campaign itself is quite hard, I must say. It is fairly difficult. Mostly because you find yourself surrounded by loads of enemies and no potential allies. I've said this before because I have to stress it again. But it is quite fun if you want more of a challenge. It's actually quite enjoyable. I had a lot of fun with Festus. One thing that Festus is very good for is some passive abilities that he has. As he's got two, which are interchangeable. They've got a little bit of a cooldown. But they are permanent and... Uh, they are pretty good, they are pretty good. So one of them focuses on being able to do some damage on an area effect, and the other focuses around constantly healing. So you can keep your forces all scrunched up, kind of like if you remember the old style for the Vampire Counts, well, the still current style for the Vampire Counts, keeping your soldiers all together, marching to an enemy gun line, and being able to heal all your guys up so they won't take too much damage whilst you work your way there. And I feel like it's very, very, very powerful it's probably something that might get nerfed in the future. I really hope it doesn't though. As for the healing, it's just very good. And for the damage stuff, I mean, if you can get an enemy blobbed up, this is either in a small location like on screen right now or any choke points and just have that down there with some other characters casting off heals, you can do some pretty disgusting enemy damage to anything that's just charging into you because the AI doesn't really recognize that much too well. So it doesn't run away from it. And uh, yeah, you can get really high kill counts with this or damage counts, better yet said. And when it comes to these abilities, it kind of justifies as to why Festus is in the area of the Empire. Not only the fact that it's very law friendly, considering that, well, you know, uh, it's near Nordland and that's where he's from and all that type of stuff. But the damage output itself or even just the general healing will make sure that you'll be able to survive for a decent amount of time and do a lot of damage. And if you're wondering about start positions when it comes to the Realm of Chaos, he starts in Albion, which is uh, quite an interesting start as obviously you're pretty far away, but you still have a lot of enemies around that area. You just have to cross an ocean. And yeah, the vassalization from all the other Warriors of Chaos stuff, that's all very much the same. Nothing changes there. I just wanted to show it off here in case some people were curious. So yeah, it's not too bad. Both campaigns essentially putting you against the Empire and Bretonia and all that other stuff really early on. So if you want a very aggressive campaign against humans, 
Well, this one's a pretty good one for you. So we're going to talk about the roster now as it's pretty important, especially because there's a lot of new units. So Festus the Leech Lord is a spellcaster, melee hybrid. He's there to do a lot of damage in general, and he's pretty tanky. He will get hit quite heavily if you have him against like gunners and all that type of stuff, but he's definitely more than capable to be at the very front considering all his abilities. Uh, yeah, I don't think that you'll have too much of a trouble. In fact, all the Champions of Chaos are very much capable of being front and center and just cause as much damage as possible. Your generic Lord choice is the Chaos Sorcerer of Nurgle, and you've got the option of either the Lord of Death or the Lore of Nurgle. All in all, it looks amazing, like, it is, it's so grim, I really like the look of it, the antlers and all that type of stuff. You shouldn't be too worried about keeping it in the front line too, especially if you can get it in a Chaos War Shrine, as those are just fun. And in general, you know, it's a Chaos Sorcerer Lord, it's still a Chaos Lord, so it's still able to do a decent amount of frontline damage just not as good as a normal Chaos Lord. You will notice poison attacks and this will be a very reoccurring theme so I'm only going to mention it once because yeah pretty much all your units have poison attacks but I mean that's expected they're a Nurgle faction you know these types of things happen. Anyways if we move on to the second Lord choice which is really more of an upgrade as well even the Sorcerer Lord of Nurgle is this is the Demon Prince of Nurgle. It's able to do a lot of damage. Once again, it can have access to the laws of magic that you're expecting. And out of all the Demon Princes, I don't know why, but I like the Nurgle one more. It just looks so cool because it's got the fat belly. You know, it just looks more hench. It's got that big ass mace to do a lot of damage with. It's just awesome. And it's, like I said, very possible to be in the front line because it's a Demon Prince. And for your hero choice, well, you've got the Exalted Hero of Nurgle. There's not really too much to talk about as it's a melee character. It's not got spells, but... It's a good support if you want to have something protecting your Chaos Sorcerer Lord from getting into too much damage. This is very much possible. It's also got a great weapon and it just looks freaking cool like that. Noble Chaos Warriors look really, really fun because they look really grim and it brings you that kit bash element once again, which I've said in previous videos, but this is so nostalgic for tabletop players and I'm having that nostalgia looking at these types of models over and over again. But overall, stat-wise, this is your tank hero. This is your hero that's going to do a lot of damage. This is your hero that's going to be able to take a lot of damage. It's what it does best. Now we start looking towards the units themselves. We're going to get a lot of different variants. It's not a big roster, like I said before, but we do have access to Chaos Marauders Nurgle. These come in two variants, which are the Sword and Board. This is the generic one. And then the Great Weapon variant. This is something that you're going to see a lot of recurring themes of, where certain weapon options are only available to one of the gods or more of the gods when you look towards Corn. But it makes a lot of sense here. Poison Attacks, once again, Mark of Nurgle, which gives them increased health, but does make them slower. It's... It's cool. It's cool. It's honestly really, really cool that you get something like this. I like the look. I know everyone's not too keen on it, but personally, I enjoy it, and yeah, we're going to disagree some cases, aren't we? So we're going to go on to the Chaos Warriors of Nurgle now, and keep in mind that only one of them is actually attached to the DLC. This is the Chaos Warriors of Nurgle with Sword and Board. The Great Weapon variant comes as attached FLC, so it's completely free. You'll have access to them even if you don't buy the DLC. So again, these are Chaos Warriors, and you'll be using them exactly the same way as normal Chaos Warriors. They just look a bit more Nurgleified, as you can see here, little bits of antlers and all that type of stuff. Really cool looking shields, I must add. Uh, they are slower, as expected. The Mark of Nogal will make them slower, but you'll have poison attacks, you'll have more HP, they're tankier. You're not expecting high damage outputs. Again, I have to say this, Nurgle is not high damage output, but rather more focused on a slower wear down the enemy type of thing. I know that sounds a bit annoying to repeat constantly, but it's how Nurgle always works on the tabletop, and I'm glad that's how they work here too. Now we start looking towards the Chosen of Nurgle. They're stronger, it's the exact same thing. You've got the Sword and Board variant, and then you've got the Great Weapon variant. They look a bit more Chosenified, and uh, the shields I'm not too keen on. Some of the shields are really, really cool. Some of them are just kind of generic. It's like what you get from the Chaos Knights um, mini pack, so it's actually from the box. But overall, you know, they're just chosen units that do a lot of damage, and these are the types of things that you do want, as you want to upgrade your units through this eventually to be able to hit against some great swords, or hey, if you decide to fight against Marauder Champions or any other Chaos Factions, you're going to need these units. With Chaos Knights of Nurgle, once again, two variants. You've got the standard one with the sword and board, and then obviously the lancers. These are going to be quite valuable for you, as they are some of your fastest units. We're going to be going over the cavalry stuff now. And for Nurgle, having some cav, even though it's slower, it 
does add the possibility of you being able to flank enemies as soon as you pin them down and all that type of stuff, which as you're all aware from Total War in general, having a rear charge or a flank charge is good to knock down enemy leadership. Yeah, they won't be able to catch up with most cav. Some of them yes, some of them yes, because 65 is still something that is still pretty decent, but they are very, very useful. Hopefully we will get some more stuff in the future, like we're expecting rot knights and all that type of stuff, but we're gonna have to wait and see. Now you might think I'm kidding, but I'm not, but Marauder Horsemen of Nurgle with throwing axes have been very valuable to my campaign because these have been my proper skirmish units. 85 speed is nothing to sniff at, it's very very quick and they are more durable so they will be able to last a bit longer. Honestly, yeah, I know, not exciting whatsoever, they're not an exciting unit, it's literally a reskin but it helps. It really, really does help, especially with Festus. Chaos Spawn of Nurgle is something that you're already used to from the base game of Warhammer 3, but this is your Unbreakable unit. These are able to do quite a lot of damage. They're able to sustain quite a lot too. They've got the uh, Cloud of Flies and all that. So yeah, they're going to be valuable. I've actually been, interestingly enough, using a lot of Chaos Spawn. I've quickly found a new admiration for them which is absolutely bizarre because I hated them early on with like even the Beastmen rework and all that type of stuff I never really used them but now they are more or less becoming quite the core unit for me <laughs> again we have another unit that we're already used to is the Chaos Chariots but these ones are pretty fast you know 75 is nothing to sniff at and they're faster than the Chaos Knights so I don't know if you want something that's going to pack a big punch for a charge you might want these over the Knights it's still something that it depends on exactly what your playstyle is. Maybe you might not use knights, maybe you might not use chariots, but I've definitely found them pretty useful when it comes to Festus's campaign. Here comes the Chaos War Shrine of Nurgle and obligatory. I've been waiting many, 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 many years for this unit. I mean, look at it, it's absolutely awesome. This is your buffer that can move around with your army at a pretty decent pace in all honesty. It can pretty much keep up. This can heal up your enemies too. So not only do you have Festus to the benefit, you've got this around. Plus it looks awesome. I mean, come on, right? Like, yeah, rule of cool. Sorry, I know, I know, I know. I am gushing over them way too much, but uh, I've really been waiting for these units for a long, long time. And as you might notice, I did forget about the Forsaken of Nurgle. Yeah, uh, I just didn't really use them much. We've already been used to these because of the Nurgle faction, and yeah, you know, they're pretty decent. Immune to psychology, they're able to do a decent amount of damage. They're a frontline unit, but when you've got Chaos Warriors of Nurgle, why do you want these? Maybe because they're a little bit faster. Frenzy can be useful, but... Yeah, I'll be honest, this is a unit that I just never really used, and yeah, sorry about that. I know there's a lot of fans of the Forsaken, but they're better off with some of the other gods. The Nurgle Rost itself isn't too large, but it is extremely durable. Pairing them up with the demons is quite good, but this is all the wars that you will be getting. I do apologize for the frame drops here, I'm not too sure what's happened. I think it might be this map, because I have noticed it on this map every now and then but it's the one that's best to showcase units, just flat ground. Like I said, Festus is a bit of a harder campaign, but it is very, very satisfying. It depends on what you want, but if you're a Nurgle fan, you might have a lot of fun here. Yes, the roster does seem kind of empty when compared to some of the others, but yeah, we can kind of expect Tamakon in the future and some extra units, so I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue. I did have surprisingly a decent amount of fun with this, which I'm generally not a Nurgle person, but it's definitely units that can be quite helpful, and if you were looking a reason to play as Korgath again, the extra warriors, having some extra armor, yeah, it it helps. It, it actually really, really helps. But let me know what you think about Festus, his campaign, and the Warriors of Nurgle units in the comments below. Let's start a bit of a discussion. There are a lot of videos coming out today. I'm not exactly sure which one this one is in my schedule, but one of all the Lords will be covered on the channel. So if you've missed any of the others, check them out. It would be very helpful to the channel. And until then, I'll see you all again pretty soon.